Awake fiber optic intubation is a technique used to secure the airway in patients who are awake or lightly sedated, utilizing a fiber optic bronchoscope to visually guide the placement of an endotracheal tube. It can be performed either orally or nasally. It is considered the gold standard for managing an anticipated difficult airway, particularly in elective procedures. Its primary purpose is to maintain the patient's spontaneous breathing and airway reflexes while securing the airway, thereby avoiding the risks associated with general anesthesia like hypoxemia and failed intubation. The indications of fiber optic intubation can be grouped into anatomical, physiological, and special circumstance categories. Anatomical factors include a previous history of difficult intubation, restricted mouth opening, airway obstruction from pathology such as tumors, infections, or angioedema, and cervical spine instability due to trauma, degenerative disease, or rheumatoid arthritis. Physiological considerations include patients at high risk of aspiration, such as the morbidly obese, as well as critically ill patients with limited physiological reserve in whom the hemodynamic effects of induction must be avoided. Special circumstances include cases where immediate neurological assessment is required after intubation, since the patient remains awake and can be evaluated without interference from anesthetic agents. As with any procedure, awake fiber optic intubation has specific contraindications, the most important being patient refusal or noncompliance. Other relative contraindications include inexperience, sensitivity to local anesthetics, and uncooperative patients such as children or those with special needs. Patients with a critical airway, such as those with strider, are at risk of complete obstruction if a fiberscope is passed through the narrowest part of the airway. Similarly, fiber optic intubation is not recommended in the presence of airway bleeding from trauma or tumor, as blood can obscure the visual field. Since we are dealing with airway, it is important to understand the relevant anatomy and its nerve supply. The upper airway is divided into the nasal and oral cavities, the pharynx, and the larynx. Sensory innervation of the upper airway is provided by the trigeminal, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves, which are essential targets when performing airway anesthesia for awake fiber optic intubation. The sensory innervation of the nose is provided by the ophthalmic and maxillary divisions of the trigeminal nerve. The anterior ethmoidal nerve, from V1, supplies the anterosuperior internal nasal cavity and the anterior nasal septum, while the nasopalatine nerve and branches from the sphenopalatine ganglion, both from V2, supply the nasal septum and lateral nasal wall. The sensory innervation of nasopharynx comes from both the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. The second division of the trigeminal nerve provides sensory innervation to the anterior and superior parts of the nasopharynx. Glossopharyngeal nerve provides sensory supply to the posterior and inferior aspects of the nasopharynx. The oropharynx is innervated by branches of the vagus trigeminal, and glossopharyngeal nerves. The posterior third of the tongue, molecula, and anterior surface of the epiglottis are innervated by the tonsillar nerve which is a branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. This nerve is also responsible for gag reflex. The posterior and lateral wall of the pharynx are innervated by the pharyngeal nerve, a branch of the vagus nerve. The anterior two-thirds of the tongue are innervated by the lingual nerve which is a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The larynx's sensory innervation comes primarily from two branches of the vagus nerve, the superior laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve provides sensory innervation to the supraglottic region, including the epiglottis and the mucosa above the vocal cords. The recurrent laryngeal nerve provides sensory innervation to the infraglottic region, below the vocal cords and to the level of the carina. That's all for this video. In our next video, 
we will see how we target these nerves to provide anesthesia for fiber optic intubation.